Today I'm going to show you how we did two epoxy garage floors in two days and I'm going to explain why we like to use an epoxy primer with a polyaspartic top coat. The first step is to grind the concrete. I'm not going to show you very much of that process because it's not very exciting. But once we get the floor ground and clean, we're ready to apply our epoxy. A lot of garage floors have hairline cracks, so before we paint the floor, we're going to patch all of the cracks first. We always like to use what's called a high solids epoxy primer. High solids means that there really isn't very much solvent in the epoxy, so over 90% of what we put down on the floor actually stays on the floor. Most of the DIY kits you can buy are low solids and water based, and that means that half of that material evaporates into the air which is why it's not nearly as durable as our high solids epoxy. I made another video that goes into a lot more detail about the difference in what we use and in DIY kits. So if you want to learn about that, I'll leave a link at the end of this video. Some other companies like to use what's called a polyaspartic or a polyurea primer. It's really nothing special about that. Literally anyone can buy it, but I don't like to use it as a primer because it just sets up too fast. Epoxy sets up a lot slower than a polyurea coating and that extra time gives the epoxy more time to penetrate into the concrete, which creates a much stronger bond. And it also just gives us more time to do a good job. Once we get the floor painted with epoxy, it's time to broadcast the vinyl chips. We always completely cover the floor in vinyl chips. This is commonly called broadcasting to rejection, but it just means we use a lot. One of the most common objections to using epoxy on a garage floor is that it's not UV stable. But as you can see here, we're completely covering the epoxy with chips, so it's never going to have any UV exposure. So we've gotten epoxy and chips on two garages today, so that's enough for today. We'll be back tomorrow and we're going to clean these floors off and we're going to put the clear top coat on both of them. The first thing we have to do on day two is clean up the excess chips. We do this by blowing the chips all on one side, then we scrape the floor a few times, and then we vacuum the floor a few times. It takes a while, but the point is that we're going to get the floor completely clean before we put any top coats on. We like to use what is called a polyaspartic coating for the clear coat. Polyaspartic coatings are a type of polyurea, but they generally have a slower set time. And this slower set time allows them to penetrate deeper into the surface, and it also allows the material to self-level a little bit after we roll it. Polyaspartic urethanes are great because they don't turn yellow like some clear epoxies do, so this is actually going to be our final coat. In the past, we would always do a three-coat system. We would do epoxy primer with a broadcast of chips, and then we would top coat with clear epoxy. And then to try to keep the clear epoxy from turning yellow, we will top coat it with urethane. So now we're eliminating that clear epoxy so we don't have to worry about it turning yellow. We're going straight to a UV stable polyaspartic urethane. And this shows you another reason that we don't really like using a fast setting polyurea. When using a material that sets up in 20 minutes, you really only get to roll it once. But since we're using a slower setting polyaspartic coating, it gives us time to roll the floor a bunch of times, and the more you're able to roll the coating, the more evenly it's going to be spread across the floor. There's been a push in our industry to use polyurea on every single garage floor, and the sales pitch is that contractors can get in and out in one day. But for us, the benefits don't outweigh the downsides. I've been showing you two different projects in this video. We did both of these garages at the same time. So on day one, we did the epoxy and the chips in both of these. And on day two, we cleaned up the floors and put a clear coat on both garages. So we did two garages in two days, which is basically the same thing as doing one garage per day. But I like our method a lot better because we didn't have to rush to put down a coating that was going to set up in 20 minutes. I've been documenting a lot of the projects that we've been doing for a long time and I'm taking a lot of that video and I'm turning them into online courses where you can learn to do the same type of work you've seen on this channel. So if that's something you'll be interested in learning more about, it'll be the first link in the description down below. 
I made a video last year that explains all the differences between a professional coating and a DIY kit you can buy at a hardware store. I'll leave a link to that video right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.